Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all to this very important meeting today, Tuesday, October 3rd, 2017, in the city of Portsmouth City Council Chambers. I would like to ask Commissioner Hoffler to lead, give us invocation and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Hoffler. Let us stand. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together today for this meeting. I pray that you be with us and guide us and lead us and direct us as we do the work of the city. I pray for our city, our state, our nation. We pray for those victims in Nevada and those still recovering from the hurricanes statewide and internationally. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for Thank you, Commissioners. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, we will now have roll call. Please indicate your presence electronically. <clears throat> Six members of the Planning Commission are present. Commissioners, before you are the minister of the September 5th, 2017 public hearing, if there aren't any changes, we are in need of a motion. Commissioner Thompson. I would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes of the September 5, 2017 public hearing. Is there a second? I second that, mo I second that motion. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to approve the September the 5th, 2017 minutes. <clears throat> you may now vote electronically. The minutes are approved six to zero. Announcements of future meetings and conferences. Please note our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, November the 7th, 2017 at 12.30 p.m. Sixth Floor Conference Room, followed by public hearing at 1.30 p.m. City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their November the 14th, 2017, or November the 28th, 2017 public hearing, or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time if you have not already done so. Our first item, UP-17-10 Parkview Neighborhood, Dan E. Griffin, AIA, on behalf of Medical Staffing of America, LLC, request a use permit for the 100-seat Religious Institution Church at 1318 Spratley Street in the waterfront WF Zoning District. The property is further described as tax map 46, parcel 19. The comprehensive plan recommends commercial development for the property. Our staff coordinator is Stacy Porter. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, planning commissioners. <coughs> I did wanna bring to your attention that the applicant who is present is requesting deferral of this item. They'd like to review their site plan again and try to work out the parking requirement for both the broadcasting station, which they'll discuss with you today, as well as the religious institution use for the property. Commissioners, are there any questions? Discussions, Madam Secretary? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-17-10. Our first registered speaker is James Moore. If you will come forward, you have up to five minutes to speak. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is James Moore. I live in the West Park View neighborhood. And um, I just want to uh, mention a couple of points Mr. about Moore. this. Uh, okay. Excuse me. The, requ the requested uh, use permit, UP 17-10, first of all, item is parking. Uh, I'm given to understand that the uh, policy uh, for 
uh, designating how many parking spaces are required is uh, one space for six seats. Um, in discussing this with some of my neighbors, um, I, I want to say that of all the church services I've ever been to, uh, I can't say that I've ever seen every car arrive with six people in it. Uh, more practically is four or less, uh, typically two, many times one. So I would uh, appeal to you to revisit the required parking amount. Um, I think I've counted roughly at 30 spaces there uh, in that place, um, the, the subject property. Um, and I think a uh, two seats per space would be a more practical uh, goal. Um, the schedule, um, I've seen the letter from uh, the agent, Mr. Griffin, about uh, explaining about um, the church service being 6 p.m. Friday after the day crew have gone home and so forth. And we ask who would monitor the schedule of events at this property, um, uh, which would affect parking uh, and so forth. Um, if a day crew had to stay over, that would factor into the parking limit. Uh, on a broader um, uh, base of uh, opinion, uh, discussing with some of my neighbors who could not be here today, uh, one opinion is that we should consider what other properties are available in Portsmouth that could be used for the purpose in general. Uh, recycle and reuse. We have a lot of boarded up property around town. Um, and I can quote uh, anecdotes from other places that insisted such properties, properties be considered uh, first. Um, this property, of course, has been laying uh, empty except uh, for the transmission towers and the receivers. Um, and uh, finally, a non-taxable property uh, I would like to see as a policy for the city of Portsmouth, we have a lot of non-taxable property. You hear about it everywhere you go. Um, and I would like to see a moratorium uh, on creating non-taxable real estate. So when someone comes to request a use permit, we should be careful about issuing a permit that could now or in the future create non-taxable property. We don't need it. Portsmouth is, uh, as you know, in uh, somewhat financial straits. Uh, so whatever we can do uh, to reduce the amount of non-taxable property or to avoid making more uh, would be to our benefit and would take some of the tax burden off the citizens. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Our next registered speaker, Quentin Rosler. Quentin Rosser, you had? Yes. Quentin, yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you might guess, I've got a hearing disorder. It's not something a hearing aid will correct. I live at 66 Armstrong Street, and I own that, and I own the adjoining property, which is 70 Armstrong Street. When I uh, first moved in there, well, when I first brought the property, it was derelict. It was something Pat Robertson had just walked away from, and it basically almost collapsed. I paid 30 bucks for it, or 30,000 for it, if you can figure it now it's worth 335 I think I own the vacant lot right next to it and I bought that from the city when they condemned it and sold it for taxes on this particular piece of property I uh, that uh, is up for the Planning Commission I agree with the Planning Commission I think that uh, a commercial property is what it ought to be Everywhere we go, people want to make storefront churches and stop paying taxes. And I think that uh, uh, we can't afford it. In 20 years, we're going to be nothing but interstate change, uh, uh, interchanges 
for the rest of Hampton Roads, I believe. I mean, we get nothing for the roads. They say, oh, you got a, got better roads, but there goes uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth the tax base. I think it's ludicrous to believe that a church will get a permission for 100 seats and not go to 101 and then to 200 and on. I don't know, I think the Planning Commission is well aware there's a saying out here that forgiveness is, is easier to get than permission. So that you can come back in and say, gee, we didn't know. Well, I live right, it backs right up to me. And um, I don't believe that uh, having watched it when it was occupied by the TV station, that uh, I think both the fire exits and the parking are marginal at 100, pe at 100 seats. And if they go to something more than 100 seats, I think then you start getting into problems with both of those items. And that is what I have to say today, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Our next speaker is Lisa Pitts. May come forward, state your name and address for the record. You'll be given up to five minutes to speak. I'm Dan Griffin. I'd like to go uh, first before, before Ms. Pitts, if I can. Yes, sir. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, the as stated before, uh, we've asked for this item to be deferred until next month. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, one of which Stacy uh, mentioned that we are trying to work out the final parking arrangements uh, for the proposed use. Uh, the one thing I would like to say, uh, we were also furnished several letters from residents with voicing their concerns, some of which same concerns were voiced here by the two speakers. Uh, this uh, property is um, owned uh, by a medical staffing of America LLC. They own the property and it is their plan to lease this property to the religious broadcasting station. It is not a church in the truest sense of the word. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, this will be a TV broadcasting station, religious station, uh, and it uh, will employ approximately 18 to 20 employees per day. Um, and the church service uh, is set up to happen on Friday evenings at 6 p.m. And it is where, where they will tape a church service for later broadcast on their TV station. Um, the way the arrangements are being made out with the uh, religious states and leasing the property, it will not remove it from the tax rolls. And I think that's a very important element. Um, and we can, uh, when, we, when we come back in November, we will present more information and more data on that. Uh, we are not ready to do all that today because of the request for deferment uh, until November. It also would give us time, I wrote letters to the uh, Civic League asking that uh, we be allowed to meet with them at their meeting, which I think is next week. I'm waiting for a return call to tell me whether I to be there at 7 o'clock or 7.30 uh, where they meet on London Boulevard at First Home Care. Um, I've also written letters to the people that uh, responded uh, expressing some of the things that I just said about how the church would be leased. Um, the, the the portion that's set up for the taping of a religious service actually only uh, houses 
96 seats, not 100. On the original submission that we did, or the, the architect that they utilized, there were four seats, which was the pastor and the assistant pastor seats. Uh, sanctuary seats are actually 96. Um, and based on the fact that this will be a day-to-day, 24-7 religious broadcasting station with only 20 employees, um, uh, I think it's a plus to say that it won't fully occupy all of the parking spaces that are there. And on, on a Friday evening, most of the, half of the parking spaces for employees will be there for participants that they go to the church. And it's, it's basically open to anyone who wants to show up at these services. So with that being said, we'd just like the opportunity for you to go along with the deferment until we can come back and make a full case next month and give us time to meet with the Civic League so we can address some of their concerns. Um, Lisa Pitts, who represents the owner of the property, she's here, should you have any questions for her? Commissioner Youngblood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Griffin, if, if I understand this correctly, um, you would be taping this for broadcast at a later date. Uh, is that correct? That's correct. Um, it, is it also fair to say that you could do this taping at a remote location? Uh, she would have to answer that question. Yeah. And, and so it would not necessarily have to be at, at that specific spot. It could be Pitts. at Intellos. It could we'll be... It could be at, at, at many other locations. Is that correct, sir? Uh, I, I, I really can't answer that question. It would, okay. it would, it would seem to me that the existing building uh, has sufficient space, more than sufficient space for them to do what they are doing for their religious broadcasting. So that, that church portion, that sanctuary portion of the building represents 4,500 square feet of the total. Now, it doesn't makes sense for the building's owner to lease that building and they're only using 21,000 minus the 4,500 square feet. Uh, all their broadcasting equipment and everything is right there where this TV station is going to be. Uh, so it really doesn't make sense to do it in a remote location. But I would, I think Lisa Pitts can better answer that question. Yes, sir. And w one Final question. You, you brought up the point that this would be leased rather than sold so that it re would remain on the tax uh, rolls. Um, if at a later date they decided to sell to this, to this church, would that change the tax status? Well, that, that's a hypothetical question, which, uh, um, uh, again, I think, in that Ms. Pitts represents both sides of this, she can answer that question better than I can. But that, that's like anything. The building could be sold 10 years from now and somebody would have to come in and put in the application to, for what the use is gonna be at that time. We're willing, I believe Ms. Pitt can speak to this, but I think she's willing to proffer that something of that nature won't happen. Um, so I would okay. answer it that way. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Ms. Lisa Pitts, do you come forward, please? State your name and your address for the record. You'll be given up to five minutes to speak. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm Lisa Pitts. My address is 488 Philstone Glenway, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I just want to clear a couple of things up. I don't know how we got church, but I am Lisa Pitts. I own, I don't represent, I own Medical Staffing of America. I own Steadfast Medical Staffing. I'm the CEO and the president. I bought the building to start a Christian network. It's not a church. So I guess in the paperwork, I don't know how, and that, I had a question with them when they were doing my paperwork. This is not a religious institution. It is a, like a TBN where we do Christian broadcasting. Uh, medical Staffing of America is a national medical staffing agency. We staff nurses, doctors, nurse practitioners all over the United States. I started that company as a single mom, and it's grew into a multi-million dollar company. One of the visions with the company that I structured, we wanted to buy a TV station and have a, for jobs, 
and have a religious broadcasting. Something along the, pro, the, the format is like TBN. Only reason we have the sanctuary there because we're gonna do Friday night live tapings. That's the only reason. Because TBN does it, INSP does it, they're good friends of mine, they do it also. I've been to some of their meetings. So once a week, we'll have a live taping. Um, so that's why we purchased a building. Well, we're gonna be a 24-hour TV station. That is the whole purpose of the building, provide jobs, training. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of training in that building, a lot of hiring of different people. We're gonna have an on off-site site also so we can do our film developing and everything. So I just wanna clear that up. This is not a church. It's on the lines of TBN. We're, just, we're gonna be just like TBN, but just Friday nights like TV, TBN does their praise thing once a week. We're gonna be doing it every Friday night, our thing. So it's not a church. I don't want to get deferred from taxes. I pay taxes and I don't have a problem with that. Medical Staffing of America will always own it. It is a major company. Steadfast Medical Staffing is the DBA. Um, and we have other companies up under. We have holding companies, real estate companies, broadcasting promotion companies. So I'm not trying to get away without paying taxes. I pay taxes in Norfolk, where my office is at. I pay taxes in Virginia Beach, where I live. And now we pay taxes in Portsmouth. So that's how this is gonna work. Any questions? Any questions for Ms. Bates? Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-17-10. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, the public hearing for UP-17-10 will remain open until our next scheduled Planning Commission meeting, November the 7th, 2017. Mr. Chairman, we need a motion. Commissioners, we are need, in need of a motion for the deferral of UP-17-10. Ms. Thompson. I make a motion that we defer this case until the November meeting and that the public hearing will remain open until that time. Commissioner G. I second that motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to defer UP-17-10 and the public hearing will remain open until that time. You may vote electronically. This item is approved by six to zero to defer. Madam Secretary, I believe that concludes our agenda for today. Is that correct? That is correct. Commissioners, do you have or do we have any further business? Mr. Baldwin, is there anything further? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I have nothing. Hearing none, this meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>